Hi everyone, today I thought I'd do a swatch video of the new Pat McGrath Matte Trans Lipsticks. They recently came out and I managed to grab all of them when they came out on their early access um, on their website. Unfortunately, when I woke up, the everything kit was gone, which I was planning to get, but I did manage to get two of the trios and then I bought the rest in singles, which is a little bit annoying because that means that I had to fork out a bit more money. But um, I'm really glad I did because these are stunning and I am a makeup collector. <clears throat> they feel really good in my hand and they are absolutely stunning. Um, I just I think Pat McGrath did a great job with the packaging, with the shade selection, all that sort of stuff. Now in terms of price, they worked out to be 48 Australian dollars and this is for four grams of product. That is a roughly about the same price as you'd pay for a NARS Audacious lipstick in Australia, which retails for 50 Australian dollars, but you are getting a little bit more product. They contain 4.2 grams. So it's at that price point. So at that price point, I expect about the same quality and I have to say, these didn't let me down. The, they feel really nice on the lips. They don't feel like a traditional matte lipstick where it kind of goes on thick and tugs a little bit at lips. Like I'm thinking about those Revlon matte lipsticks, even the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid, um, matte lipsticks that recently came out. I did buy one and it did have that traditional matte lipstick feel. These kind of dry down to a powdery finish. They feel really, <clears throat> they don't really feel like you're wearing that much on your lips. I mean, I can obviously tell that I'm wearing my lips, but it doesn't have that very heavy feeling. And on top of that, what I love about them is that they don't accentuate fine lines on my lips and they don't make my lips feel super dry, which matte lipsticks can tend to do. On the downside, they aren't transfer proof and they don't claim to be on the website. So, you know, that's something to take into consideration. Obviously they're not gonna wear as long as perhaps your traditional, you know, matte liquid lipsticks. Um, they also are a little bit inconsistent between shades because some of them definitely look a lot more matte than others. I would say the darker shades have a more creamier finish, or else the lighter shades definitely look more matte. I mean, you can blot them down and if you blot them down, they'll all look pretty much matte. But I mean, when you call a lipstick matte trans lipstick, you expect them all to look matte. And on top of that, all the marketing pictures, they make the shades look very matte. I would have to say though, as much as I love these, I just wish that, um, you know, they were just more readily available. I hate the fact that they're always sold out on her website and that you can only get it on her website if you're from, it, you know, you're, you're not in the US. If you're in the US, they are still available on Sephora, but for everyone else, it's really hard to get. And being that they're always limited edition, you have to pretty much nab it when it comes out. So that's really my pet peeve about Pat McGrath products. I've loved everything that I've tried, but it's just so hard to get. And on top of that, the shipping is 25 US dollars, which to me is quite expensive. And it did take two weeks to arrive to me, or else I paid about 17 US dollars for Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it literally took three business days, which is what I expect when I'm paying that much for shipping. Anyway, if you wanna see swatches, lip swatches of these lipsticks, um, as well as a kiss test and how easily they remove, whether or not they stain, as well as a few dupes that I have in my collection, then just keep watching. The first shade we have is 1995, and this is described as a warm, light nude. I actually don't have many nudes in my collection because I find it very hard to find a nude that flatters my complexion, but I think this works really well because it's on the warmer side, so it would suit people with warmer skin tones, and also it's not too light, so it doesn't wash out my complexion. As mentioned earlier, these aren't transfer proof and they don't pass a kiss test. And given they don't have your traditional matte lipstick finish, they are fairly easy to remove with some micellar water. So this is 1995 swatched on my skin. It does turn up darker on my skin than on my lips. And in terms of dupes or similar shades in my collection, I have I Like to Chai from Beauty Bakery, which is slightly darker with more of a brown base. Even more similar than that is Echo Park from Colourpop, which is brighter and more pink. Then last dupe we have is from the Ultra Matte Lip Range in Times Square, which is darker and more mauve toned. Next shade we have is Omi, named after Naomi Campbell, who's been part of Pat McGrath's previous campaigns. And this is described as a mid-tone rose shade. I really like it because it's quite flattering and wearable and good for people like me who have conservative day jobs. 
And as you can see here, this one doesn't have as much of a matte finish as the previous one. It still has a bit of a sheen. And again, because it's not transfer proof, it doesn't wear very well through food and drink and does need to be reapplied. Like the previous shade, it comes off really easily and it doesn't stain the lips. For dupes of Omi, we have Mars from Coloured Rain, which is slightly more brown based. Then we have Sedona from Makeup Monsters, which is one of my favourite shades from this indie brand and it's slightly more pink. Lastly, we have one from Bite Beauty, and I wasn't going to include this because this was a custom-made lipstick, but I thought, why the hell not? It's my channel, and it is a very similar shade to the one I bought. Last one in the Skin Show Trio is Flesh 3. This is a deep brown rose shade, and it has red undertones as well. I would say this is one of my favorite shades from the whole collection because I do quite like brick reds. And I did realize that I actually bought a very similar shade from the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Matte Lipstick range, which I'll show you in the dupes. Like the previous shade, this one doesn't quite dry down to a matte finish. I would say it still has a bit of a satin cream finish. And it also does transfer. Compared to the lighter shades, this one did take a bit more effort to remove with some micellar water because the pigment, there's quite a lot of pigment in the lipstick and um, it did stain just a little bit. So this is Flesh 3, and as I mentioned previously, the first dupe I found in my collection was a recent purchase, which is Stevie from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I would say it's 95% similar and maybe slightly lighter. Then we have Leslie from the Nars Audacious range. It's more red and has more of a slip to the formula. And last one isn't strictly a dupe. This is a drugstore alternative, which isn't matte and is more dark and wine toned. Moving on to the Color Blitz trio, we have Obsessed, which is a bright orange red. Like the previous shades, it's very pigmented, it glides on very easily and is lightweight on the lips. And it doesn't have a traditional matte finish, I would say it definitely still has that sheen. So if you do want it to look more matte, you do need to blot it. Overall, I do like this shade, although it isn't particularly unique and I do prefer a blue based red personally. None of the lipsticks in the rest of the collection pass the kiss test, so this is the last one I'll be doing. This wasn't particularly difficult to remove with micellar water compared to other matte lipsticks, but this one did stain my lips. So I did find quite a few good dupes in my collection for this shade. First we have Red Square from NARS, which is lighter and slightly more orange. Venice is probably the closest dupe I have in my collection to this one, but it is slightly more vibrant. Then we have Short Circuit, which was a collaboration with Guy Boudin from 2013. It's really old. This one is more sheer. Next in the trio is Elson, which is named in homage to Karen Elson, who I believe is a model and a musician as well. I really like this shade. It's a nice true blue red shade and it goes on very easily. It's very pigmented. It feels lightweight on the lips and is probably my favorite shade in the trio. So this is what it looks like on my face and I have to say it has definitely more of a creamy finish to it rather than a matte. Again, because it's super pigmented, it did take a little bit of rubbing to get the lipstick off and it did stain my lips. I am using a micellar water, which is an oil based, but I would recommend for the darker shades to use an oil based makeup remover because it'll make it a lot easier. So I do have quite a few dupes for this shade if you didn't manage to get your hands on it. The first being this one from Shoot and Roar, which is a long time favorite, which is slightly warmer. Then we have Future Red from the Guy Bourdain collection. It's again slightly warmer and more sheer. Really Red is a good drugstore alternative. I used to wear this a lot back in the day. Atlantic City from Ofra is slightly darker. Mysterious Red is very, very, very similar, slightly darker and has a more matte finish if that's what you're looking for. Last in the Color Blitz trio is Full Panic, which just reminds me of that manga Full Metal Panic, although this probably has no reference to it whatsoever. This is a bright fuchsia, and I generally don't like fuchsia shades, but I really actually like this one. I think it is fairly flattering. And again, it's very pigmented and it goes on really nicely on the lips. So this is Full Panic in all its glory. I think what I like about this fuchsia is that it leans more towards red than purple. Again, this one takes a little bit more effort to remove with micellar water rather than an oil-based remover, and it does stain the lips a little. 
So because I don't wear fuchsias a lot, I only found two similar shades in my collection. This included the Makeup Forever one, which is more berry toned. And secondly, Fire from NYX, which is more corally pink. Moving on to the Vicious Venoms trio, we have Antidote, which is a magenta purple shade. I noticed that this one definitely has a thicker consistency and tugs a little bit more at the lips like a traditional matte lipstick. And also it is semi-opaque, but you can build it up to a more opaque finish when you layer it on a little bit more. I also noticed that it didn't necessarily adhere very well to the inner portions of my lips, as you can still see the red sort of peeking through. And I think that's due to the thicker consistency and um, it being a little bit more difficult to layer over those kind of more um, textured areas of my lips. So this is what Antidote looks like after building it up about two layers. I like the shade, but I wish it was a little bit more opaque with just one swipe rather than having to build it up. This one didn't take too much effort to remove, but it definitely does stain your lips a berry shade, which you may or may not like depending on how you like your lipsticks to fade, but I do quite like it when lipsticks leave a nice stain. I do quite enjoy wearing purple, so I have a few similar shades in my collection, the first being Full Frontal, which is more sheer and pink. The next one is Glitter from Colourpop and unfortunately it's discontinued, but it's slightly darker and has more of a raspberry hue. Bury Me Too from Dose of Colors is again similar but more rich in pigment. Malibu is probably the closest dupe I have, although it is drying out so I need to put a little bit of Inglot Drew Line to revive it. So this one's not strictly a dupe, but it is a nice kind of creamy sheer alternative from the Sephora collection. Next shade is McMenemy, named after the model Kristen McMenemy, who is very famous and quite well known for her androgynous appearance in the 90s. So I'm guessing there seems to be a theme where Pat McGrath is naming at least one shade out of each true after a model or a muse. Anyway, this is a deep burgundy shade. And as you can tell when I'm applying it, there is a lot more slip than the previous shades. And it also has more of a creamy sheen to it. This one also requires more layering to build it up to an opaque finish. Overall, I do like this shade, although it's a bit finicky to apply like your darker shades tend to be. And I do wish it had a bit more of a matte finish because this wears and appears very creamy. Now, this was one of the harder shades to remove with micellar water, so I definitely recommend an oil-based remover. And it definitely does leave a stain on your lips. So most of the dupes I found were from the drugstore and indie brands, the first being this Revlon matte lipstick, which is not as dark and rich in hue. Then we have this one from Melt Cosmetics, which is extremely matte and more brown based. Black and Tarte from Makeup Monsters looks warmer with stronger red tones. And lastly, we have Mina, which is more purple. And again, like most of my Ofra liquid lipsticks is drying up, so I will need to add more Duraline soon. Last and final matte trans lipstick is Deep Void, which is a deep black and purple. It's quite a nice alternative to black if you're the kind of person that likes to wear black. Similarly to Mac Menemy, this one has quite a lot of slip to it and it did feel quite creamy on the lips. The pigmentation was also probably the best of the three darker shades, but again, like these kinds of darker shades, they're kind of a pain in the ass to apply because you have to take extreme care with application, which I often tend not to do. So I can see myself not really reaching for this one very often. I'm also building it up because it does need an extra layer for it to be fully opaque on the lips. So this is the final result and it does have quite a strong sheen. I actually have quite a few dupes for this one which are way more matte in finish so stay tuned for that if that is your preference. Again I'd recommend removing this one with an oil based remover because dark pigments tend to be more stubborn to remove and this one does heavily stain my lips and also my arm from all the swatching. So I did manage to find five dupes in my collection for Deep Void. The first being Chianti from Stilla which has more of a purple base than red. Plum Sorbet from Beauty Bakery is slightly darker as is Maroon Masquerade. Queens is slightly lighter. Again, it's watching really badly because it's drying up. And lastly, we have Tom Bleu from NARS, which is one of my favorite deepened aubergine shades, but not quite as blackened as Deep Void. So those were the swatches and dupes of the Pat McGrath Matte Trans lipsticks. I hope you found this useful and interesting. Let me know if you're gonna pick any of these up or if you're gonna pass on them completely because they're way too hard to get. 
Anyway, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.